what a group we are left with now. Landis is in there as well. Can't see how many. Looks about six here from the back. Cadell Evans, Cloden, Landis, Sastra, um, Leipheimer. Then we've got Menchoff, and then we've got Bogart. These are the names. I'm pretty sure now one is going to win the Tour de France. And now this is the group behind, and this is Joy now Schleck alongside Christophe Moreau. Can't see him, but Zabeldi is in this threesome as well. It's three minutes now from this group of leaders at the front of the race and back to the yellow jersey group. They've only got another one minute and 45 seconds to lose. And if that group remains intact, then Floyd Landis will be the new leader of this race. But I'm sure somebody else is going to launch an attack before we get to the top. And what about Levi Leipheimer starting the day ten and a half minutes behind because of a terrible time trial and also he didn't ride well yesterday. He could be up amongst the leaders with a four minute deficit on people like Landis by the end of the day. Menchoff. Here, there's Menchoff's attack. Well he was set up by Chloe by uh, Bogart. Now what price the others to follow this man? You have to follow this acceleration at this time. The first man to respond was Carlos Sastro. Landis looked in a little bit of pressure there but responded admirably. Cloden is gone there is a little bit of weakness in t-mobile now t-mobile are seeing the first chink in the armor of andreas clone look at that face Menchov looks over what damage have i done well you've got rid of a couple but you haven't got rid of sastra you haven't got rid of landis and you haven't got rid of cadell evans and i don't think you will either looking at the faces but he's looked over his shoulder see how many he has got rid of. where's my Paul man floyd where's Lan bogart he Levi sees Leipheimer. bogart no he sees bogart down there he's dropped his teammates as well as he's dropped Cloden and now there are but four or five of them left and now Leipheimer's going that was to be anticipated Levi Leipheimer he's the lowest place they might not react oh yes they will well they won the stage victory they didn't need to react to Levi Leipheimer he's a long way down he's about six minutes behind Floyd Landis in the overall classification but Menchov wants the stage this afternoon nails him back admirably Landis just sitting there oh. waiting comes back up on the wheel of Menchov Sastra is probably the most dangerous rider Cadell Evans still there we're down now to five men in the final few kilometers of this mountain well Leipheimer must be ruining a day he couldn't have he didn't do a good time trial because he lost so much time and look at the face of Cadell Evans still looking good so too Sastra a calm and casual drink there for Floyd Landis Leipheimer's made his move now he says to Menchoff you can come and do the work again while I rethink our strategy well if you wanted to chase me down you might as well come to the front and set the tempo now and I'll have another go and here he oh, goes again, goes again. This is the second one. Oh, no, that was quickly. a dummy. Oh, that was a dummy because Landis was right on his wheel. When you're locked on a rider, there's no point. Well, it was a good try, but he didn't catch them by surprise. A very strong Denny Menchok. Still with the advantage, the man on the left, number 71 in the green and yellow, Floyd Landis, is the best placed man in this group. He has got rid of the closest rider to him in the group, and that was Andreas Cloden, and he's got almost a minute advantage over Cadell Evans. He's the most aggressive rider of yesterday, Mercado. Now, after that attack, he seems to have lost a little bit of ground here. The yellow jersey of Dessel, still the yellow jersey on the last climb of the day. And he's fighting to keep it for a little bit longer here. And he's got the power and the courage, I think. But it all depends how the leaders start to react against one another. Sastra Leipheimer, Menchov, Evans and Landis, these have turned out to be the strong men of the Tour de France today. Here they are, head to head. That's now indicating five kilometres to go to the finish, but it is three kilometres to go to the summit of the climb. They're all looking over their shoulders. They're wondering, what do we do? How can we recover from a situation like this? Well, guys, you are losing a massive opportunity here this afternoon. You're losing the opportunity to put time between yourselves and this man, 21, Andreas Klug, who may well ride a lot better when we go through into the Alps, because some riders cannot handle the Pyrenees, but they can fly over the Alps. The body changes in a three-week stage race uh, on a daily basis. You hammer the nails in the coffins when you've got the advantage, because otherwise they have a habit of opening the lid again and getting back in the action. Well, I tell you, if Lance Armstrong was one of these leading group of five, he would say, right, I know I can win this race. I will put the hammer down. I'll drag you to the finish. I don't give a hoot about winning a stage in the Tour de France. I want to win the race after three weeks. He would fly up this climb and then let somebody else take the stage victory if he saw the opportunity of putting time between himself and another opponent like Andreas Cloden. It's interesting, though, that Floyd Landis himself now has taken control of this breakaway. He's setting the tempo. 
Perhaps feels it's his turn to have a share of the pacemaking because he has followed, only followed at the moment. Same has to be said of Cadell Evans. This is Christophe Moreau a bit further back down the slopes of Christophe. Right up above where those cars are, that's where they climb to on a series of switchbacks. This is a hard way to end the Tour de France. See the flags too. Just see how strong that wind is blowing right on the noses as they approach the line. Well, that is the nasty thing about this climb. When you just look up to the summit, to the right-hand side or to the left-hand side, depending on which way the road is going, and you can see the cars littering the side of this mountain, you know, sadly, that that that's where you have to go well the clock is counting but there's still more than a minute in hand for the Mayo Jean the clock will start when somebody crosses the finishing line Landis getting the mask on now getting himself into a rhythm now's the time that he needs to take control of this race if he thinks he's going to win it after three weeks in Paris sitting in second place is Menchoff Cadell Evans in his normal position right down low behind him Carlos Sastra Sastra probably thinking more about trying to win the stage and Levi Leipheimer probably rather upset about the time that he lost in the individual time trial. He is going to be the tiger of the overall classification today. He's going to jump right up amongst it. He may have lost too much time to certain men to win the tour, but he could still look possibly at a podium finish in Paris. If he rides like this through the Alps, the whole picture could be turned upside down and it would be great to see Le Levi uh, force his way back into this Tour de France. He's so far taken his bad days gracefully. Those are the five riders setting the trend now. Menchoff has gone to the front to do his share, and Cadell Evans rides on Menchoff's wheel now. Oh, he hasn't. All change again. All change again. Levi Leipheimer consistently staying at the back of this group. Carlos Sastra is the most dangerous rider. He's got a very explosive move down towards the end as all of these riders look up at these banners across the road, and it's a telltale sign. That will say four kilometres to go there for this man, number 31, Christophe Moreau. But you can see he doesn't have very much energy left in the engine room this afternoon. He's calling for it to, become, to come forward. He's summoning the engine room to keep him going forward. He's just trying to keep himself in the top ten of the tour. The orange-clad supporters here wondering what's happened to their team today. Ibai Mayo in the sag wagon. The last survivor in the breakaway was Zubeldia. He's been unhitched now. This is Christophe Moreau. These are the men now shaping it down. They've got almost a kilometre's lead on Moreau now as they race up to the five kilometres to go board. Well, this is a very... This is the yellow jersey group, so about two kilometres difference now. Well, he's done a great move, the yellow jersey. He has really survived. He's got a couple of friends out there. Damiano Cunigo is the man setting the pace on the front of the group. Calcioli is the other man in there from uh, Credit Agricole. But Cyril Dessel... He may well just survive the yellow jersey here this afternoon. This is where the leaders stood at the start of the day, by the way. Landis at 4.45, Evans sits in 11th, Menchoff 16th, Sastra 18th, Leipheimer 58th. They're making huge jumps, and if it all falls right for Landis, he could be the next Mayo Jean. And that will be our sixth different leader of the tour this year one kilometer to the summit of the climb and race radio has just crackled through with a gap between these leaders and the yellow jersey of four minutes and six seconds ah. it is going to be so close between the yellow jersey and floyd landis there are let's not forget 20 seconds time bonus for the first man to cross the line 12 seconds for third eight seconds 12 seconds for second eight seconds for third if floyd landis were to win the stage he would have to wait four minutes and 26 seconds not 446 right and this is andreas cloden parting the ways here as he races through not that far behind the leaders but not catching either Cloden, I make it around about 45 seconds in arrears, but this was a big opportunity today to gap the man. Leipheimer's Leipheim gone again. Gone. We are watching Cloden. Leipheimer's gone. Menchoff's after him. Landis is after him. Cadell Evans is after him. What about Sastra? Sastra looks as though he might be a bit shaky with Evans. Leipheimer making his bid. Now we've got the long plateau once we're over the top yet. Well, Leipheimer tried to gap these riders, then Menchoff was immediately Menchoff's up there. Going. No. Well, he's just yes. trying to take control. He's seeing if he's got the acceleration now. You've got to respond to this, Floyd. This is the moment. This is the acceleration that might give you the extra few seconds to give you a yellow jersey at the end of the day. And there he is, right onto the wheel of the Russian. The Russian looks down to check his gears. It's very dangerous to do. Landis now takes over. Now, look at the way he's pedaling. This looks like a Lance Armstrong. Cadell is in a little bit of trouble there. Number 61 with Carlos Sastra. And at the 
front now. Floyd Landis has realised there. Sastra goes. He wants to win. He still wants to win for Spain. A huge effort there for Carlos Sastra. I think Cadell's on his upper limit for this day at least, but he's still going to be right up overall. Shoulder to shoulder. Menchov versus Landis. And Menchov is worried. I don't think he can control Floyd Landis right now. Well, Landis is looking very comfortable. He doesn't have that big acceleration, but what he does have is the ability to slowly bring up the pressure like a big old turbo diesel engine. Once the turbo starts to kick in, he comes up and he closes down on all of these accelerations very comfortably. Thank you very much. Landis now with Menchov, Levi Leipheimer. He's still trying to think, Phil, whether or not he can win this race. But also what these three riders are doing is trying to gap the chase's yellow jersey by four minutes and 45 seconds give or take a few depending on the bonuses well over the summit we go and it was Menchov first but now it's Landis taking up the running from Menchov and Levi Leipheimer Menchov is in an American sandwich here and Leipheimer is back that's the big news for Gettelsteiner well I'm just thinking about what Robbie Ventura the coach of Floyd Landis said to me the other day he said Floyd can generate 1200 watts in the sprint but he doesn't want to sprint he doesn't want to go right up there because sprinting really hurts his hip and no he probably won't want to do that because he's still got a long lot of racing to do in the race like this Despite the fact that this man is injured, despite the fact that he is facing a hip operation after the Tour de France, what he wants to do, Phil, is go out the overall winner after three weeks. He's not going to risk it for an individual stage win, I don't think. Well, don't forget, they're into a head win now, and the boys behind Landis, it's their advantage. Leipheimer would like to win now to wipe away the bad memories of the opening week of this year's Tour de France, which has put him in 58th place. He's going to be right up amongst it tonight when we see the next result. He's back, and Sir Carlos Sastra here rides fourth on the road. Carlos Sastra was hoping to take the victory for Spain here this afternoon. We're on Spanish soil. Floyd Landis goes to the front, whipping up the pace. This is now like a man who is thinking about time, not about an individual stage. I've made a quick calculation. If Floyd Landis finishes third on the stage and takes the eight-second time bonus, then he's going to have to wait for four minutes and 37 seconds. Look at the face of Levi Leipheimer here. He's just waiting for the moment to take a jump for the line. He wants to win this stage more than anything right now, the Gellersteiner rider. He is going to sit in the slipstream of these two riders. They have the most to gain this afternoon in high overall positions. Leipheimer wants a stage win, and that's uppermost now in his mind. Very difficult finish. It's on the flat, but it's against the wind now. Look at the face of Denny Menchop here now. Leipheimer gets his teeth and hangs on. This is a 200 metres to go, break hard, swing left, hit the headwind, Leipheimer now, can he come out of the stream? Here he comes, I'm not sure they can handle this one, it looks to me as though Denny Menchop is going to make this for the victory, he gets it, Leipheimer second, Landis third. Well now what we've got to do, Phil, is look at the clock, I made a quick calculation, here is Sastra and Cadell Evans coming into the line, we have got to see four minutes and 37 seconds if Floyd Landis is going to take the overall lead here, Sastra and Cadell Evans coming in, they've not lost too much, that keeps Cadell well up at the top of the overall classification. He has seen himself move up a long way in the race this afternoon. He started the day in 11th. He's probably going to move up into third. Hats off to this man. He set it up for the win this afternoon. Michael Bogart, the boogeyman from Holland, has done a great job, and this is his best ever mounted top finish that I can remember. And his work was so well founded because the man he did it all for will be drinking the champagne with him tonight, Denny Menchop. And Menchop will be up amongst the leaders now, second or third in this race all depends on how it all happens later the clock is running it's nearly a minute since the Menchop, Leipheimer and uh, Landis crossed the line if it goes to 437 and then it's all over and Landis will be in yellow boy what a great great day of racing this has been the clock is ticking he's going to swing into the home straight here and see that clock and it's going to say that he's not the leader of the Tour de France He's about to come into that final bend. What a fight on his shoulders here. What a desperate day in the mountains for everybody. This man rode so well. Is it going to be one mountain too far? 4.37 is the time. It's going to be desperate. Four, five, six. Floyd Landis leads the Tour de France tonight as Dessel races home. And he's just out of the yellow jersey. How sad is that? Well, if you're Floyd Landis, not particularly. This was the moment the numbers added up to the race lead for him.
So there's the result. Menshoff, Leipheimer and Landis finishing together. 17 seconds ahead of Cadell Evans and Carlos Sastre with Michael Bogert sixth.